Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Um, first off, thank you for visiting my channel. I appreciate you watching. And uh, if you enjoy what you find here today, uh, would you make sure to hit the like button before you leave? That helps me out a great deal. And uh, if you also want to consider maybe watching a second movie to see if it's worth uh, worth your time, uh, I'd love it if you could subscribe. Uh, my channel is growing pretty quickly, and I'm putting out quite a bit of content every week. So. Uh, today I'm going to make uh, a hinged pendant. It's actually going to have three hinges. One connecting the bale to the top stone and then uh, hinges between each of the other two stones. So that's the topic for today. Let's get started. So I picked out some stones for this one with my, wife, with my wife's help. Um, actually, what inspired this one is years ago I made this one for her, which has a Labradorite, a Laramar, and a little blue topaz, probably 20 years ago, so it's kind of tarnished. But uh, she always liked and got lots of compliments, so I was going to make something similar with these stones. So I have uh, this little druzy quartz that has kind of a, a black matrix, and then I have this black onyx with a stripe in it. Uh, sometimes they just call it onyx, but it's cut so that the, the point of the stripe matches the cut of the stone, so I kind of like that one. And then I have a little just clear, uh, clear quartz with kind of a... Um, Briolet kind of top on it, so it's really sparkly. And I was thinking I'd put that at the bottom and put a little hinge between each of them, and then, uh, and then we'll see how it goes. So um, hinges tend to be a little more on the advanced side uh, when you spe specifically because the last thing that you do is you're going to be soldering a little pin in each of the hinges, and if you have the solder that that's already there rerun. You can sometimes cause your hinges to stop moving, they'll freeze up, and then you have to start over on the hinge. And so, um, until you have a little bit of soldering experience, this might be a, a, a project to put off until you have a little more experience. So, but uh, either way, watch, you can see how it's done, and you can try it if you want. Um, so, let's get started on some bezels. Uh, what I'm going to use, uh, I've got a 26 gauge sheet, uh, sterling sheet for the bottom. Uh, I've got some 14 gauge wire that's going to create some uh, a wrap around some of the bezels to make it uh, have a little bit thicker profile. I've got uh, let's see, I've got um, 14 gauge round wire, which is actually uh, just the right size to fit into this tube, which is uh, let's see. Uh, I always buy the kind of tube that has the inside diameter that's just slightly bigger than the outside diameter of, uh, of whatever wire you're going to use for the pin. And in this case, it's uh, for some reason they sent me fine silver, but it'll work just fine. Um, but it's uh, 0.3 millimeter wall 12, however they categorize that. So that's what I'm using for this. But the important thing is that 14 gauge fits right in it nicely so we can solder that in pretty easily so, and it'll give a relatively strong uh, hinge joint then. Uh, for the bezels for the stones, for the for the big ones I'm gonna, just going to use 3 16 inch bezel strip that's made out of fine silver and then this uh, quartz is relatively deep so I'm going to use a little bit of quarter inch bezel to make the bezel for him because I'm going to have to put some uh, um, 18 gauge round rings in there to create a step for that to sit on. Okay. And apparently I forgot to grab the 18 gauge, so I need some 18 gauge for that as well. And then as always I use hard solder primarily. This is one of those situations though where I will be using um, on the last solder joint when I do those pins I'll be using easy solder because I don't want to reflow the previous solder joints. And this is one of the very few times where I use this stuff. Um, I've done it where you just use hard solder, but it's you run you run a higher risk of having those solder joints freeze up on you, and then you have to start over on the hinges. It's no fun. So let's make those bezels. So to start with, let's make a let's do the quarter inch one for a little faster stone first. Thank you everybody for all the nice comments that I've been getting in the in the comments section. That's really flattering. Some of the things that people say, I appreciate the nice input. And the collective or constructive cr criticism, too. I appreciate that as well, because I certainly want to make these better if I can and more useful.
we were in the process of updating uh, my website where you can purchase jewelry and things. So um, I'll let you know in future videos when that's been updated and looks looks all fresh and new. Just checking to make sure I'm doing this in frame. I'm still working on keeping my hands in the right spot when I'm doing this for the camera. Right now I'm just getting the bez bezel ready for soldering together. size I think. Alright again, I've got a little piece of 18 gauge here. I use 18 gauge for a lot of stuff. It's kind of a good middle of the road size of wire for decorations or whatever. step bezel with rings like this uh, I usually make them I cut them a little bit too big and then gradually snip out little pieces that way you're able to get them pretty close to the exact fit on the inside of your bezel just keep snipping pieces out until it fits right and you don't end up cutting too much off and having a gap nobody wants a gap on the bottom of their bezel you also don't want it so tight that it tries to ride up the side. I'm probably going to have to do three rings to lift this up high enough to, to where that point won't stick out the back of the bezel. solder these down, uh, solder them inside I should say, uh, it's important that you really push them down nicely so they're sitting horizontally. If you don't and you have one that's slightly tilted, it's going to make the, the surface for the stone to sit on going to be a little bit slanted and then that will cause a problem when you go to set the stone. So, But i got plenty of solder here, so I'm going to throw a few of these on the pad. Um, this is a trick that can be applied elsewhere too other situations but rather than trying to pick some solder to the inside or some something difficult like that when solder flows it it will go against gravity so I can put some, something on top of pieces of solder as long as the things that I'm trying to solder together are both touching the solder when they reach that 1450 degree temperature they should just flow. So you heat, heat this just like you would a regular bezel. I also have a special video, a specific video, and I'll put a link up there uh, about making uh, bezels for faceted stone. It'll probably be more complete than this. File the bottom nice and flat. Okay, we got a little flat bottom and a little step bezel. One down, two to go. Let's do the easy one first here. And we're just going to use three sixteenths inch, three sixteenths, sixteenths inch. Because these don't require quite as deeper setting.
bottom line there in a minute. Do this one now. I looked at the stone from the side for a second there because sometimes with pear-shaped stones, when they cut them, they'll taper them way down to the point here. This one's not so bad, so it's got a pretty even bezel uh, level where it'll need to be. So sometimes if they drop down really low, you can you can file your bezel so it tapers down at a gradual slope to to fit those better. But this one looks like it shouldn't be too bad. So I think we'll be all right. One of the things I noticed when I first started doing this uh, was I started noticing in, uh, in stores and stuff, I started looking more critically at jewelry and bezels and things like that. And some of the stuff that is sold uh, in stores is, has terrible workmanship on occasion. I've, I've seen just awful stuff being sold for a lot of money. <laughs> So I always try to make my bezels look really nice when I'm done. Because that was usually the worst worst part of the, the pieces, was their bezel work. backs on both of these, but up top here, I think I'll probably put a bale kind of like this up there, and I'll even use this one since I've shown how to make this bale a million times. Uh, so yeah, I think that's that's what we're going to go with, but um, I'm going to do something uh, to, make, uh, to make it so I go to put this tubing on these guys, you want to be able to solder it to a flat surface because you want to be able to uh, have a good solid connection for the entire length of the tube where it's going to be part of the hinge. And so it'd be nice if we had a spot where we could file it flat, but you can't file right into the bezel flat. So if I, if I put a border around this bezel made out of, I, in this case I'm going to use 14 gauge square wire, it'll allow me uh, a rounded surface that I can file flat. So it'll have a kind of a, a curve from the stone, but I'll be able to file it into that in a, in a horizontal direction so I can solder on a longer piece of tube here, if, if that makes sense. I think you'll see as we get going here what's, what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's put some backs on these uh, other two bezels. challenges people have when they're new at this with doing uh, doing a bigger bezel like this is that the bezel sitting up top is very exposed to the heat that I'm putting on it from above but the sheet that it's sitting on is not able to get as hot because the bezel kind of prevents that flame from hitting it all over and um, and so the sheet is harder to get up to 1450 degrees than the bezel is. So people have a tendency before they ever get their sheet up to temperature to melt their bezel because you can get that overheated while not quite getting the sheet up to temperature. So it's a little bit tricky until you figure out how to keep the heat moving around all the time and make sure you're hitting all the spots that, that need to be hit and not leaving part of it unheated. That's one of the tricks with silversmithing is heating the entire piece and not uh, neglecting part of it. So 
that usually ends up badly if you do that. Let's throw one more in there just for good measure. Okay. For instance, this one has a lot of surface area in the middle here, so normally where you're trying to heat from the outside of the bezel and the sheet to draw the solder outwards, it's got enough acreage in the middle there that you need to heat that as well. But, kind of actively avoid the bezel. What I'm doing with the pick is sometimes there's spots that aren't quite in contact with the sheet and solder doesn't like to wick along seams unless they're in contact. So the solder that I had on the base, if I want it to flow all the way around there, it needs to be in contact all the way around. Okay, so I think, I think I'm going to put square wire all the way around uh, the upper one. I'm going to put square wire all the way around the lower one, but I'm just going to put it across the top in an arc that tapers back into this because I don't want it to go all the way down here on this one. So let's do it that way and see how that looks. Um, there's a couple of things you could do here too. You could, uh, if I had cut the sheet a little bit bigger, I could solder it right down onto the sheet up against the bezel. I usually trim it off and then make uh, one that fits perfectly around it and force it on there and then solder it together. Either way it'll work okay. I just think this way is a little bit easier. Bending square wire, it has a tendency to twist um, because the physics of it, you're trying to compress this side of the wire and stretch out this side of the wire, so it tries to find an easier way to bend. So when you're bending it, you have to kind of use something to control it. I use these flat nose pliers. Oh, that was pretty close on the first try. So I always uh, circle it around whatever I'm doing and see how close I can get while it overlaps like that. And then I can cut it off pretty pretty close. And then if I file it just a little bit before I solder it, it'll be slightly too tight and then I have to file the inside of this just enough so I can force it in there. And that way you get a nice clean solder joint all the way around it. If you have any gaps, like if I tried to solder it on, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this on the camera or not, but I think you will. Right here it's tied up against it, but up here there's a little gap. So the solder will not look the same all the way around if you don't get that tied up against there. So that's important. So I'm gonna I'm gonna measure about exactly and then I'll file some off and that should get it pretty tight. Still need to fill up my flux bottle. I think I said that two videos ago. filed off the excess solder. Make sure it's sitting pretty flat. Yeah. I actually got it on there the first try. Maybe it's too loose. I don't know, I think that'll actually solder okay. As long as I get the size or the shape exactly right, it should be fine. This is another one of those times where putting the solder underneath it will actually be workable. So let's throw a few pieces on there. Excuse me. Okay. 
can also, I don't think I have any gaps, but if you did have some gaps, you can go back and pick some more in there if you need to. It hurts to have a little extra side, just in case there's a gap that you didn't see. I think that's good. I'm looking, I don't see any gaps. You can see them all the way around. So, uh, I'll have a back of this just a bit. That should polish, polish up pretty good. Like I said, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a partial one on this one. And close. I think that's probably good enough. Okay, with a little cursing and a little filing, I got it to go in. We'll do the same thing we did on the other ones. Okay, I'm just going to file the bottom front. Looks pretty good. Getting there. This I probably didn't get perfectly straight, so I'll have to do some tapering anyway with the Dremel, probably to kind of have it gradually taper into the pear shape. But what that'll allow is it'll allow me to file a flat edge there and a flat edge there in order to get a nice even hinge there, and a flat edge up there so I can put a hinge from here to here. And then I may I may do a V of square wire on the bottom here, but I'm going to think about it. Uh, I'm going to take a, I think I'm going to call it a night and finish this tomorrow. And then we'll decide about that. So I think that's going to come out to be pretty. So stay tuned. <clears throat> so I think I'm going to go ahead and put a V shaped piece down here as well so that I get a little bit of a wider spot to solder a a tube two for the for the hinge. Now I'm going to try and mark a center spot on here. <clears throat> I need to kind of straighten it out so it looks more symmetrical though, because I bent the bezel a little bit. So in order to provide a more a wider platform for a tube to be attached there, now I have some space I can file a flat surface. So we'll be doing that next. Okay, I'm also going to be filing a flat spot on the top here. And ideally we want these to be parallel to each other. We we'll also need a flat spot on this guy. It doesn't really matter which side. stone horizontally like this, so I'm going to try and find the center this way too. I think that's pretty good. So, see how it looks when I line it up here. So I need six pieces of tube. Um, <laughs> basically, I'm going to make a hinge. got this bezel over here, this bezel over here, and solder a tube on this one, solder a tube on this one, like that, and then uh, we'll cut a slot in one of them like that, and then cut the ends off of this one here, but you got to make the slot and the size of this piece here just so they fit together like that, and we'll do that doing here, here, and here. So, 
So let's cut some foods. I'm going to, uh, instead of cutting the way this normally cuts because it's a small tube, I'm just going to go about, I don't need any that are longer than, than about a quarter inch, maybe a little longer than that, but I'm going to cut them about that length. And I'm going to go against the way the saw cuts just to kind of wear a groove in there. And once you get it started, you can... Although a lot of times with these tubes it catches since there's two bits of sheet you're going through basically. So I cut it most of the way through and then bend it off like that. Yeah. So I'm going to cut six of these. Some of them don't need to be quite as big, probably, because they're going to be the inside ones. Okay. So for me, the easiest way to attach these has been to pick solder, a little bit of solder to the outside of these tubes to start with. You want to, when you're doing a hinge, you want to avoid getting any solder inside of the tube at all because if it does, then you won't be able to put that pin in there. And also, it would cause, even if you just had a little tiny bit of solder, it may cause problems when you do the final pin soldering in. So, you want to try to avoid that. Normally, if I was doing a little tiny stone, I'd normally put the one in the center with two surrounding tubes on the top side up here, but since I have kind of a narrow point on this right here, I'm going to put one tube on here and then one across here, and then we'll cut out the center of this one. So <clears throat> we'll do that first. You don't want to pick up these tubes while they're under heat with the tweezers or anything because they're thin enough to just kind of crush, especially when they're hot. I'm just going to put that up against there. This is one of those situations where you're heating things with disparate masses and trying to solder them together. This little tube has very low mass. This thing has quite a bit comparatively. Put most of the heat on the bigger piece because it takes longer to get that up to 1450 degrees. This one, third hand. So the little uh, little point to one of these bales uh, that I, uh, I actually have a video on. I think I, I don't remember whether I. If I didn't make a link earlier, I'll make a link up here for this. It's for making these little bales. Uh, but they have, if you look at them from this angle see the way they come together they have kind of a V there so you can actually just lay the little tube right in there there's already solder on there so I just gotta plop them on there because I wanted to do one other thing before I let them uh, really pickle for a bit. I wanted to uh, check to make sure that my pin would go through all of these tubes. Okay. 
seems like it's relatively straight up and down. I made one a long time ago, and after I was done, I realized that it was just slightly crooked. Or I think I think that the bale up top was a little bit off center, and uh, my wife liked it, so she took it. But every time she wears it, all I see is that that little crookedness that I made. So try to get it as straight as you can. But now that we got the tubes on, we checked to make sure we got no solder on the inside of the tubes. That's why I was pushing that pin through. Now I'm going to heat them up and let them pickle for a while to get rid of any flux or anything uh, that might cause the solder to flow where I don't want it to uh, before I cut these so they fit together and then we put a pin in and solder them. And then we'll set the stone and finish it. But, uh, so they need to pickle for just a little while. So, uh, I still got those other two pieces pickling, but I thought these ones are good enough. So, I think uh, we need to narrow this one down a little bit. So, I'm going to kind of delineate Actually, I should probably do it the other way. I'm going to pink the parts that I want to get rid of. And you can, you can use the Dremel, you can use the file, you can use the jeweler saw um, to get a clean, um, clean line. I think I'm going to use the jeweler saw this time. Okay, I think I should probably lubricate this a little bit with some wax. I'm going to clean that up with the file for a second. Okay, so I was just kind of finishing up the filing on on these uh, tubes to get them to fit together. So you see I widened these ones a little bit uh, so that it fits together like that. Okay, and then we need to uh, try one of these 14 gauge wires. Let's see if we can get it all lined up and everything. Occasionally, if you didn't uh, if you didn't hollow this area out behind the hinge here so there's enough room for the other tube to rotate in there, you might need to go back in there and file that down a little bit. Okay, I'll push that through there. Okay, so that one fits. Alright, so we got a little bit there. Now I just have to do the same thing on these and I'm not going to make you uh, watch me do it the whole time. I was considering making this one uh, five-way hinge. But I'm not sure if I'm feeling that risky where I have two two tubes on this side and three on this side that all fit together. That makes for a nice clean uh, hingey motion though, more so than these ones. I don't know, I may try that. If I do, you'll see in a minute. But uh, for now, let's, I'm going to get started on these ones. So, I had a fail on the first try, so I'll uh, probably have cut that out of the video. But uh, I had this, I got a little too hot and it seized up in the hinge here, so I'm going to give it another go and we'll try it again. So, cut some more of this easy solder. What I did to fix the screw up is I just cut off the tubes and the pin and I just put a new one in. So, give this another go. Frustrating when something like that happens, but it happens. Okay, we still got movement this time. It doesn't matter to me so much whether it actually flows all the way around the tube here. I, as long as it solders to some place in the tube and this thing is not going to move. Even if you only get one side, it's probably fine, you know, so, so I'll just snip that off. You can clean that up with a file or the Dremel. 
I probably, if you've never done a hinge before, I wouldn't try to do multiple hinges on your first try. Maybe just do a hinged bale, or a, like that, or do a two stones hinged together. That's a good way to go. Now, I gotta be careful not to get that one so hot that it flows things too much again. Uh, so I'm gonna focus most of the heat down here. Very high tech. movement on that one. I believe we still got movement on that one too, it looks like. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to heat this whole thing just a tiny bit. I don't want anything else to reflow, but I use cold pickle, not hot pickle, so it needs to be a little bit warm when I throw it in there or for it to accelerate the process. All right, so it's pickle time, and come back once that's cleaned up, and we'll set the stones and finish it up and polish. Did a little bit of the tedious stuff off camera for you. Uh, when I say I'm going to clean things up on the Dremel, um, what I mean is I, I use a, a rubber wheel that has an abrasive compound built into it to kind of smooth out spots where there's tool marks or where I've scratched it with the file too much or, or whatever. And it just does some pre-polishing, kind of saves me some time on the wheel. Uh, so that's what I mean when I do that. But <clears throat> now I'm going to go ahead and set these stones. I'm going to start with the faceted. I filed down the bezel to the point where it just barely sticks up above the girdle of the stone. And that's kind of where I want it to be. And so I'm going to go ahead and start setting it at that spot. Just checking to see if everything's in frame still. Doing this with the two other bezels flopping around is sometimes a little bit challenging. So I, I did some tag board to put behind these guys. I'm not sure exactly. I stuck this in here. The tip was sticking up high, but the back was a little bit low. So I may put a little thin piece, extra piece in the back here, just to kind of change the angle slightly. I guess I'll go take it and polish it now, and I'll bring you back the final result. Okay, here's the final deal. Uh, I think it came out okay. I didn't get it too crooked this time, <laughs> which is oftentimes the case, but uh, I think that's a winner. I think those stones actually go pretty well. I'm not terribly good at picking out stones to go with each other, but I think that one came out nice. So I'll take a better picture at the end and put it, or excuse me, I'll take a better picture and put it at the end of the video. So let's see. But one of the things that's nice about these is the movement. So it catches the light a lot. So, all right. That was the triple hinged pendant. Uh, I hope uh, that you found it useful. And if you did, uh, make sure to hit the like button before you leave. And uh, I'd love it if you would subscribe to my channel. Uh, it's growing, and I have a lot of video content coming out every week, so uh, I think it's useful, especially for beginners. So thanks for watching, and uh, happy silversmithing. Take care.